Welcome to this exclusive Toonami Faithful Podcast interview. I am your host, Sketch, and I have with me my co-host, Kuro. Happy Kuro Kitty. Hello. And we are delighted to have on the show Xanthi Hume and Kaylee Mills. Hi. <laughs> because they play the characters of Kimi and Yuri for Housing Complex C. Yay. Of course, you may have heard them before on Tsunami. Uh, Xanthi was Hidomi and Fulikuli Progressive, another Tsunami original. And Kaylee was Alice, among other characters, Alice on SAO, which is a pretty big role. So I thought it would bring it up. <laughs> mm-hmm. What would you say are the defining characteristics of your characters, Kimi and Yuri? Kimi is. I feel like she's very um, extroverted, very brave, very happy, and she wants to spread the joy. She wants everyone to be as happy as she is about where she lives and about the people living there. Um, Yeah, and I think she's like, uh, she tries very hard to be welcoming to the new new residents at Housing Complex C. Uh, I think those are like, would be her defining traits. For Yuri, um, I'd say she's definitely the older sister type, uh, but she's also coming into this new place like all by herself. She has just her parents and then um, she knows no one else. So she's a little bit quiet and a little hard to open up at first, Um, but she's also very mature for her age. She's very observant um, and she really wants to like protect Kimmy. Uh, So I think that that's it's it's really nice and really the, the best way to say it is that she is the older sister type. Uh, and in, of course, she gets to meet Kimmy and Kimmy's exuberance wears off on her and uh, she's they become quick friends. So that's very sweet. Now, when you were uh, approaching voicing these characters, did you take any inspiration from characters or spooky horror films that you've seen before? Uh, I would say that I didn't i mainly because kimi just uh, even no matter what what is happening she tries to stay very positive and so i just try to keep her in this like that like nine-year-old like innocence a little pocket (laughs) despite whatever is happening yeah i think it's easier to kind of focus on like what makes it a little bit more different from a lot of other uh, things in the horror genre, which is that we're dealing with like two children that are the main characters. So yeah, they're they're, they're this very, there's this very big contrast between the innocence of these two kids um, and then like all of the really dark stuff that's going on. Yeah. That is, uh, it's something that I I noted about the show because a lot of times, particularly in horror um, shows being developed in Japan, the the main characters are probably going to be teenagers so it's interesting that they're younger than that that they're they're nine and ten though uh yuri seems to know an awful lot about uh mental problems like she was trying to talk to hideo about and that that (laughs) seems uncharacteristic for a 10 year old to say the least she's very mature (laughs) she's definitely very mature for her age just just a technical question here because i because I'm curious about it. Uh, were you able to record this show with completed animation or was it uh, kind of rough when you were recording it? I think it was mostly completed. Was it like and, that for you, Kaylee? Yeah, I think so. I think there may have been like one or two things where they weren't 100% sure if they might there might be a change. So like we, I think we recorded like a couple of versions of a couple of lines, but for the most part, it was just about what we see now. Uh-huh. And given the um, time that we're living in, was were there um, particular uh, accommodations when recording, or did you record in the studio? Uh, I recorded remotely. Actually. I did too, from home. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's cool. great that you have that flexibility to be able to record from home, and and it sounds so great. It sounds so seamless. So that's fantastic. We love hearing that the industry is expanding. You know, post COVID into that element. So. That's great. Yeah, Bang Zoom's always been really amazing at like accommodating uh, home studios, and they do such an amazing job with the mix to make us all sound so mm-hmm. great together. Um, and yeah, we're lucky that you know our immunocompromised friends and just those of us who aren't quite comfortable going back 
um, are able to still record safely from home. So thank you, Bing Zoom. <laughs> that's that's good to hear. Those sound engineers are, are working real hard. Yes, <laughs> they are. <laughs> Very hard. And you guys have to do a little sound engineering at home too, don't you? When you're doing the record from home. A little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all a, a growing process, I would imagine. Especially with the screams, because you can't just like blow it out from your end or else oh, you can't oh, do yeah. anything with it. It's quite a bit of that in this show. <laughs> <laughs> There's more. Trust me. Oh, I, I believe it. I believe it. So yeah. both of you have done a little bit of live tweeting. So I was wondering, uh, have you enjoyed seeing the viewer response for Housing Complex C? It's been super fun getting to see everybody's responses, um, especially with the, the ending of the, la the second episode that we just saw. I think that got the most like shocked Pikachu faces from everybody, basically. <laughs> shocked Pikachu faces. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Um, it's just it's cool that we live in a time with Twitter where we're able to do something like this and kind of all share that together. Uh, one thing that was really hard was there uh, there were some times where I was trying to take a picture. It's like, oh, I know that this is going to be like a little hidden thing. Maybe I can just like snap a little picture and they, they happen so fast. All these like little background things that I missed it every single time. <laughs> but yeah, pay, really pay close attention. There are so many like little hidden gems in there. I have to agree. I I had to watch both episodes twice to catch all the detail because it's funny. The pacing is both fast and slow and it, it, it moves to suit the storytelling method. And I thought that that that's really fantastic. The level of detail that's gone into it. And I suspect that's because it's four episodes and it makes it flow better to have, you know, the change in the pacing. But I'm sure you, you've no, you both have noticed that as well. Mm hmm. As a viewer, it might help to also pay attention to like the, the days of the calendar that Kimi tears off, just see how much time is passing. Because I think that, oh, yeah. that's pretty important later on, too. Mm, seems like there's a lot of things to pay attention to in Kimi's <laughs> apartment. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and for those who are worried about the pacing being slow, uh, trust me, it does catch up. And uh, next week, if you miss it, you're gonna have no idea what's happening in week four. So please do watch it. You're I'm in for so a ride. nervous and excited. <laughs> and I'm sold. I'm sold. I mean, big things got to be happening in episode three and four. So that's, I promise that's they are. Excited. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen any interesting theories on Twitter as you've been observing fan reaction? Hmm. <laughs> I was pleased to see that the people of Twitter all love Khan. They're like, no, this yes. is a good guy. I was worried, like, yeah. I, I feel like he's putting, oh, it's like the big old bad guy. And it's like, nope, everyone knew. He's like, nope, Khan's good. We love him. <laughs> yeah. I remember how the first episode was called Optical Illusion. I really thought that maybe that, that opening sequence that's so harrowing, that's so violent, was a sort of throwback to that title where it was an optical illusion that he was a bad guy because he seems like he really wants to protect Kimmy. And I think that that came through well in the animation and the voice acting and the overall storytelling. Yeah. He's screaming Kimmy, but he might not be screaming at Kimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, Who knows? Find out. <laughs> I, I, I have a little theory that it, and it has to do with that cat tail on Kimmy's clothes. I just, <laughs> It moves a little too fluidly to not <laughs> be an actual moving tail, I feel. Or is that another optical illusion? Ooh. <laughs> that's, that's what I got going on. Yeah. But there, there yeah, what's seen... going on with that tail? <laughs> That'd be something nice to find out. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot of too. things. A lot of yeah. things you're wondering about, Kimi. A lot of things. And there's also things I'm wondering about Yuri, the way that she is um... what do you mean the way that she is <laughs> the way that she's, <laughs> she's reacting perfect. she's 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 reacting to all the adoration that everybody has for kimi like why does everybody treat this girl so so with like with like everybody loves yeah. kimi <laughs> yeah everybody does <laughs> love kimi they're little kimi <laughs> I mean, that's just hard, though. Like, you're the only other, like, little girl in the complex, and one gets all the attention, and you're just kind of feeling like you're there watching it. I don't know. Maybe it's just normal jealousy. Just normal jealousy, maybe. Maybe. 
Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully, it's just normal jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're they're both very cute little girls and you guys are doing a fantastic job bringing them to life with your voices. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for your stellar performances. I want to shout out to like our, our other castmates too. Like, um, yes, yes, of course. Like, uh, Doug is Koba, uh, Jake is Taka and, um, Michael is Yoshiken. And I do like the, the three, the old, uh, old men kind of like poking at each other for being old and like, (laughs) (laughs) and also like for being, uh, like little mentor or like mentors for the the kids you know giving them talking about history and like helping them do like with this when kimi has the idea for shaved ice they're all like game for it and help her to like find the machines and like putting it together so i think they've got a nice little community there they do they do have a nice close-knit community and it's 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 nice seeing all these elderly people also appreciating the young people and particularly uh, Jake, as he's doing all these lines of Taka, like he has a lot of things <laughs> that he's describing and explaining. Is like, oh man, <laughs> that's a that's that's a mouthful. <laughs> he does so great though. Like you're able to listen to it and understand it how he's explaining it. Um, yeah, I think that some of the lines that Taka has, especially in episode two are referring to translation of the song that Kimmy is gleefully singing. And I, I made the observation and I think a few viewers did that there was some Japanese translation nuances. And I, I felt like they did a really good job trying to uh, convey that translation into English. Um, How did you feel about that? Having, you know, probably seen the Japanese version or heard your Japanese voice counterparts do all of this. I know that for when I had to do the singing, Maki was there for all the recordings. And so Mm -hmm. she was able to kind of um, explain alongside with Bill Ah. what was what those meant or like why it was being said so that I when I was singing, I was like, okay, well, at least Kimi kind of understands a little bit (laughs) Ah. what she's singing. But yeah, I think that helped. Uh, she helped with at least nuance on that part, and I'm I'm sure she had a big hand as well when it came to Taka's explanation of it all. That's really interesting. Yeah, Maki's fantastic. I I have met her twice, and I think she's lovely. <laughs> she's so passionate, and she puts so much love into everything that she like crafts. It's amazing. Yeah, that she does. Is there anything that you would like to tell the fans? My biggest thing would just be watch for every single little detail because it is only four episodes, but they do put everything in those four episodes. So, like, pay close attention. Uh, it's about to hit the fan next episode, uh, so give yourself <laughs> give yourself time to process after that because you're not gonna you're gonna be like what? <laughs> just just take the time um, and hopefully rewatch it again if you have HBO Max or wherever it might end up. Uh, yeah, because this is something you can enjoy over and over again and pick new things up. I 100% agree. <laughs> There's so much going on. And, you know, I feel like the first two episodes kind of lure you into this, like, false sense of security. And then um, three and four is going to be wild. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's doing a Lots good job of yeah. keeping the tension moss. up, though. Just the oh, little, yeah. little things so here and tension. there. That it's just a little eerie all the time which I think works very well for this. Yeah, you just gotta watch for those frames. You feel really nervous as the viewer because you you get a sense of vulnerability from the characters because of that jump scare they keep doing and the tension they keep building up. You're like, oh no, I'd want everyone to be okay. And then things keep happening. So it's it, it's really, it's really excellent the way that that tension is built up and and you know as as you say I'm going to be paying closer attention to the, the details in the future. Mm. So before we go, I'd like to thank you for your time, but is there anything else that you wanted to uh, let the listeners know that you're working on lately or that you recently uh, that's recently been released? For me, uh, Licorice Recoil and Orient mm. are about to uh, finish show. up. So uh, please uh, watch those. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I guess then for me, uh, Engage Kiss is also about to finish up. 
Um, so yeah, check that one out. And if you're into games, um, I'm playing Cisne in the Crisis Core remake, and I'm insanely excited about that because FF7 means a lot to me. So I hope you'll play. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Well, and it's been delightful, and I can't wait to talk to you guys again after the show is over. Sounds oh, my good. gosh. I'm sure we'll have tons of questions, and I'm sure that our, <laughs> our listeners will have a lot of questions, too. I'm excited yes. to hear your theories <laughs> that I can't confirm or deny yet. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, thank you again both for your time. We really appreciate having you. Now tape it! Overwhelming, choking me. Mm, I think change is too.